So I'm going to demonstrate uh, association rules analysis. Uh, we'll be using the banking, the bank data set. Um, I have already in, uh, imported the bank, but I'll do it again just to demonstrate. Um, so in the meantime, when I do that, if you're not following along, maybe it's um, um, it's it's worthwhile to get familiar with what the data set is, you know, what kinds of variables are in the data set, and I'll do a few exploration uh, plot, plots to better understand uh, those variables. I think it's on 63, page 63. And you can start to relate your <coughs> uh, personal experiences with, with banks those uh, typical common services that banks, retail banks, offers to uh, consumers. So data source. Bank. And you can see there are only three variables. And I'll explain later uh, after I finish the, the demo to talk about the data formats. But there are uh, a large number of rows. So it's a very long table. And of the three variables, one of the variable has to be an ID. You need an ID column here. Um, one of the variable will be target, which is the, uh, the, the actual choices. <coughs> Account would be an ID. Service here, the service referred to banking services, you know, including credit card, check-in, uh, savings, certificate of uh, deposits, and uh, loans, and et cetera. And be sure to select target for services. This is a key. Uh, visit, you can either retain or ex exclude it. This is relevant to the sequence analysis, which uh, adds one more dimension to the analysis. You know, when, when, when you consider time sequences, first visit versus second visit, then you can model uh, you know with more details here we only consider bundles so there's no time element here but we you know i can keep it in it but uh, uh, reject the variable later on so that is the correct uh, setting the service is a nominal variable and one more Key setting is that remember to change the role of the data set to transaction. And this is a transaction type of data set where each role um, documents the, the customer who adopt the service and the exact service that is adopted and possibly a time uh, variable which is the visit. Right. On which visit did, did which customer adopted which service? <laughs> so I have two banks. Um, so I already um, did those, but uh, you know, start uh, dragging the data source over and. What I first did is the uh, graph analysis to uh, take a look at the the general distributions of the services. You know, think about this data set where you only have let's say only on, only have two relevant columns. One column is customer ID. The second column is the service, uh, banking service adopted. So you know which customer has what service. And a customer 
can have multiple services. So the same customer can appear on different roles, on multiple roles, um, <clears throat> at least one. So you wonder, what is the service that is used by most customers? In a banking um, context, deposit, so savings, savings account. Uh, we're talking about accounts. So you know, think about the accounts that you have um, in a typical bank, you know, Chase, Citi, uh, Bank America. You have checking, typically, uh, savings, sometimes, credit card, credit cards, uh, most definitely. So different credit cards are different accounts. You know, one, they are, they can be modeled differently. <laughs> Um, for here, I think the data set has one card per type, one account per type. So it, so it doesn't model two types of checking accounts. It doesn't model two types of credit cards. So assuming everybody has only one credit card, if any. Right. And uh, for this data set, Stats Explorer will not work because there's no there's no input. And so that's why <coughs> I use Graph Explorer. And after you run, oh, when you say Graph Explorer, make sure you modify uh, the sample amount and make sure it takes the entire sample. And where is it? OK. Now, so the Graph Explorer made a pie chart, even. I'm thinking I, I need to make a pie chart, but it's already made. Great. Um, so a pie chart is better than a bar chart, because you can see relative comparisons very quickly. What's the most frequent ad adopted services? We can compare the, the chart to the, the, um, the data page. Oh, you don't have a pie? Oh, you do not? No. Do you have? Really? You can make one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you know where to make money. Um, oh, it's a user graph. That's what you made it. Really? Yeah, user graph one. Did I not, did I not remember I made it? Great. And it saved it. I thought it, yeah. it don't save. But, you know, go to plot and pie chart and select service as a category, and you have your chart. So what's the number one service? Checking. Checking account. Almost as, as much. Savings account is almost as much as popular, but not quite yet. Uh, you know why. <coughs> ATM is the ATM card. Um, and let's look at the, some of the others. CD, certificate of deposit, earns more interest, but locks in. It has penalty. Uh, Checking card, checking card that is used to um, replace the, the check balance sheets, I, I guess, when you present to the, to the bank. Uh, credit card, somewhere here, credit card. And this is, do you know what this is? Sean, you familiar? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah, only homeowners. This is only relevant to, to homeowners. And auto is the auto loan. You, yeah, you do have. <laughs> it's a small piece of pie, but uh, uh, other, in, including all else. 
Um, can you think of one that's not on the chart? Bonds, investment. You you do. Uh, it's managed by retail banks. May not be. But. Uh, Oh, bonds, government, bo government bonds. Yeah, I, I never bought it, so I don't, I don't know. <coughs> what else? Um, mortgages, mortgages is one of the popular types of uh, products. Refinancing. That's part of mortgage, I think. Yeah. Car loans are a big one too. Car loans, yeah. Do uh, retails, do, do retail banks do as much uh, car loans as mortgages? I think mortgages might be more um, prevailing on a surface tax because it's more more profits, basically. Yeah. So that's that. And uh, some of these will be will become relevant when we look at the results. Okay. So we're talking about these, you know, ten, eleven services. The question we ask is what might be some of the popular bundles that customers choose together? And how is that information useful to me as a banker? As a, you know, not banker, uh, bank. What? Tell, yeah, bank owner. Um, I can, without, with that information, I can think about doing some targeted marketing to those who only have one of the services. And if I know the expected percentage of um, customers who already has a service, what's the a, what's a likelihood of those customers also will be interested in B services, but just haven't had the knowledge about it or didn't know that we offer it? or was just busy and hadn't got time to do anything yet. If we have a, 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 you know, an expected likelihood, and if it's high enough, then it probably justify a targeted uh, marketing campaign. So that's the, um, <coughs> that's the idea. So let's do some uh, association rules analysis and see what the Discoveries can it can it turn out? Uh, it's under explore, the first one, and very interestingly, you know, uh, I'm talking about association rules, A.K.A. Mar market basket analysis, but there is an association, and there is a market basket. They differ by the type of data set that they use. Uh, association rules uses the transaction type of data set. The other uses a, a market bundle type of data. You can convert between the data types, and I'll talk about it in the slides um, shortly, but uh, you know, they do come with different, different options. So association rules, and you know, once you connect it, <coughs> take a good look at these options. And I'm going to throw this and get a new one. So these will be the same setting as you have. Maximum items. This is the cap of the number of uh, services in the bundle that you can model. And for now, let's change it to one. What does that mean? We, for, for, for both antecedent and uh, consequent, we're only looking at one service. We don't allow more than one service in any of those uh, positions. So things become simpler, right? If if customer chooses a service, what service does he does he also choose? And minimum confidence level. What is confidence?
Can we talk, talk a few about that? Mm. So a rule uh, takes this format. If, if, if antecedent and consequent, if A, then B. That means if you have knowledge that this customer or this, this transaction, this basket or this purchase, this order, whatever, um, contains a product or a service, service A, then what else tend to be in the same uh, purchase order? So there's an order here. A and B cannot be switched. Otherwise, it changes the story, right? Um, a rule support. So, well, let, let me talk about confidence first. We have A and B. <laughs> rule count confidence uh, uh, calculates or indicates the the likelihood or the proportion percentage of those who have who you know have purchased A. What's the likelihood of also purchasing B? For example, um, five cu uh, ten customers purchased A, and that's on the only ten that you have. Ten customer customers purchased A. Five of them also purchased B, and that's fifty percent. That's conditional likelihood of the rule. That's confidence. But then what's support? Support is a sort of a condition that qualifies whether a, a rule is at all valuable. Um, it, it takes account of the entire number of customers. So let's say if your entire data set has 100 customers, and you know that 10 of them purchased A. Of these 10, five of them also purchase B. So the number of customers who purchase A and B would be five. And the support is five out of 100. So what does it tell you? It tells you how relevant this rule is. If, no, if, if only one uh, customer purchased ever purchased these two products together, this rule might not be very interesting because you know, how in the world are you going to do uh, a lot? You can't do much because, you know, it, it, this rule doesn't lead to a combination that is highly represented. So it's not important, sort of. And that bundle may be coincidence. So there's no pattern to be acted on. So support is sort of like a condition, a precondition for how important the rule could be. And rule conf confidence um, is, tells you how important is it regarding product B. How important is it that you know customers also has A, right? Out of all the customers. You know, the knowledge about customers getting A gets you closer to be able to sell product B it, because it's a subset that also purchases both. So, so you know, kind of keep in mind the differences uh, between these two concepts. Um, typically, confidence is more than support. And that's, that's typically, and you can think about why. Um, it's not of a yeah, I don't go much into detail, um, but that's the that's a typical case. <laughs> okay, so going back, coming back to the demo, um, here you have a, a a confidence level. You can set a threshold, and you have a support threshold. And confidence def default th uh, threshold is higher than support threshold, because that is typically the case. Confidence is a conditional, probably, tend to be 
larger than the overall probably that's and the support is a is a, a you know sort of a it's a it's a <coughs> it's a combi combinatorial uh, percentage it's it's much shorter it has more constraints but anyway um, these two settings help you uh, filter out those uh, those rules that are less important on two dimensions. Uh, confidence level help retain only those rules that has that reach a certain level of of confidence. And remember, confidence is the the percentage of customers who already purchased A also purchased B. The focus is on B. The information is about A. Um, you know, this this is this is also important. Uh, you need it to be high enough. Um, instead of uh, keep it at ten, I want to retain all the rules that has at least twenty five percent confidence. That means at least one fourth of the group who already purchased A also purchased B. Other than that, I'm not, I don't care because it's it's less to less confidence. Support, I want it to be higher, but not too much higher, definitely not over confidence. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to increase uh, by uh, twice to 10%. Of any rule that surfaces, I want those rules uh, with the support of at least 10%. What does it mean? Any rule that I see must have customers who buy A and B more than 10% of the chances. So at least 10% of the, of the entire population of the entire data set has to purchase both products for me to pay attention. So this drastically lowers the number of uh, rules that it discovered. You know, uh, extreme cases, you keep those as zero, and then you have the entire uh, rule space. And so we changed three things, and that changed a lot of the results. And one last thing to, to check, which is according to the tutorial, you know, modify this export rule by ID to yes, so that in, when you export the data set, you have the rule number as well. Okay, now you can run. So, a question for you before you look at the results. Think about um, support. Of all the possibilities in, in this case, <coughs> it's banking services, and you know most of the uh, services. Think, think about two services that are the most frequently used by the same, by the same uh, person. What are they? Checking the savings. So the, the sort of the hypothesis or the guess would be this rule will have the highest support. Is that support right? It's not. It's not confidence. It's support. Okay. Um, of this rule, it's either if check-in then saving, or if saving then check-in. You know, the order matter. So, so pick one for now. Let's say if, if, if check-in then saving. What do you think the, the confidence will be? Near, near 100, near perfect. That's, that's one guess. Can you say that again? Yeah. I would just think about the condition. If there would be like checking, then there would be savings. So, so saving. what would be the confidence? 100%. So uh, the, case, uh, the case about 100%, it's rare. But I'm not saying this is not possible here. Uh, the case of 100% almost makes it a dependent. Uh, uh, condition, you know, sort of like um, if let's see. if 
you if you have a checking account, uh, wait, hold on. If if you have a checking account, you the it's a hundred percent that you have a saving account. That means um, before you can open the checking, you must have a saving. That's kind of a, a you know a dependency uh, rule, right? And, and in banking services, it is there are there are such rules. You know, you want to get a credit card? I'm sorry, you need a checking account. You know, so the rule of credit card, if credit card, then checking. You can, you can, if, if that is a rule, then you can know, you can uh, not guess, you can know for sure uh, the confidence is 100%. Because B depends on A. Oh no, A depends on B. A depends on B. You need to first get B. Then you can have A. So the rule, which says if A then B, is not very useful. We'll see it. Um, so let's see if, if the results conform to the um, expectation. Your highest support might be checking and saving. And let's see. So this is how you look at the results here. Uh, <coughs> a bunch of graphs, and these, these graphs are they help you navigate and, and start to shift your attention on those rules that uh, deserve attention. In the case that you have 500 rules, and it's a lot, a lot of rules. Here, quite a lot. Hold on. This is not what I intended. Um, support type. Today, maybe I need something higher. Still fairly a lot. Um, I want the numbers to be higher because I I want to simplify the results so that it's it's more clear. Um, my target is 12, 12 rules. So I'm uh, increasing the support, the thresholds. So this uh, this blue line, um, blue line is support. It's a lower left um, graph. This blue line is support. The highest support <coughs> is at here. Fifty-four percent. Uh, what does it mean? So 54% 50 per, of the um, customers have um, two, two, no, um, two, two services as uh, described by rule one. Uh, we'll take a look at rule one, what does, it, what does it say? But the highest support here is 54. Um, it's ha oh, you know, slightly more than half of the <coughs> sample size. Um, the prediction was checking and savings, right? You can take a look at the description, description of the rules by going to rule description. Let's 
you can keep it keep it on the side. So I I see I see how um, the chain of rule uh, can be as as high as three, and that is not <coughs> what I intended. So I need to update this this uh, characteristic, but even s sequence. Oh, yeah. There's um, there's a need to disable the sequence uh, variable, which I uh, forgot to do. So that's what made it happen. Um, on the data on on the variable feed, uh, property on of the association node. Go ahead and disable the visit, which is a sequence variable. Yeah, uh, with the with the visit variable, it automatically does a sequence um, analysis. So, and it adds more comp comp complexity to the problem. So it increases the you know with the sequence. There's a time order, so then you can model first and second uh, r uh, part of the rule. And that makes things complicated. And sequence analysis is you know one more, um, one more level of complexity here. So if you do that, and I remember my number was ten, so I'm going to change it back to ten. So this is uh, 16 rules, almost similar. And this is a manageable size. Um, this chart, stats line plot, uh, plots the, the four stats, the four quantities uh, for every rule by uh, indexed by the rule ID. So the x-axis is the rule index. You, know, you have beginning from 1 to 16, 16 rules. So you know when you click the exact aligned uh, position, it won't work in the middle because there's no rule over there. So if you click the right point, it will highlight where where the point that where the dots are. And when you hover, you can see the statistic. So remember the highest support that we anticipated, and it's by looking at this line. This line is. Something like this. This one. This line. Uh. Wait. No. Hold on. Support. Is this line, the third highest line, and of of all of these rules, the highest support is over here. It's a peak. So and and there are two rules that share the same highest support. Which is expected because when you switch order, the rule changes, but the support don't change. Right. So what are these? Did you see the description? Yeah. Checking and saving. Checking yeah. and saving and saving and checking. Yeah. So you can change the order and change the rule, but don't change the support. Um, great. So that's rule 13 and 14, where, which is the case. Great. You know, um, when, I, when I took a guess, I think I have, I, you know, I, I was, laugh, I was uh, smiling. I've, I've got a rule that has 100% support, but uh, didn't work that way. <laughs> um, I thought, you know, check an account and 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 um, check in a, a check card would be a hundred percent, but uh, didn't work out. Anyway, so so that's the highest uh, support, but highest confidence. I think checking and saving, if checking and saving, might be the highest. Is that the uh, hypothesis? If checking and then saving. Let's look at the confidence 
confidence here. We have 100%. Confidence is staying on the top, the top line. And the very first two rules have the highest confidence. So what does 100% conf confidence mean? If A, then 100% B. Then B should be the condition of A. Right? It goes backward. Right? B should be the condition of A. If you know, well, let's see. If the person already gets B, it's guaranteed this person has A. And typically, it's the dependency of the services of banking on the checking account. You have to have a checking account, otherwise, sorry, because we don't have your credit. We don't know you, right? Uh, getting checking account approved and having a checking account, being able to monitor the balance, gives banks a, a lot of confidence in, you know, in, in approving some, some credit. <clears throat> and you know, when you look at the first two rows, that's it. Uh, home equity line of, line of uh, credit depends on checking. If you know this person has home equity line of credit, you almost guarantee that you know, this person has a checking account with this bank because checking account is a condition for the other additional services. Uh, the second one, checking card. This is almost like a you know, no-brainer um, case. If, so based on the, the, the first one, the first one, that's fine. The second, the second rule, no, rule number two has perfect confidence. What does that mean? If you know the customer has A service, you can guarantee the customer will have B service. Then can we go after all the customers who have A service to promote service B? But they already have it. Oh, no. Right? So this is the rule with the highest confidence. But you can't do anything. You don't need to do anything here because these are the rules. Right? Would it, go, would it be the same thing no. as dependent, what, what you mentioned oh. earlier? Uh, so the dependent <coughs> cases are a exception, I think. Oh, okay. So in, in case of dependencies, Whatever rule that you discover might not be useful because that's a dependence. So don't mistake the high high confidence rule to be a useful rule because it might be a dependence. Right. But the analysis doesn't take a, take into account the dependency. This is an explore, exploration tool, right? So it requires you the main knowledge to interpret the uh, the results. <coughs> If you switch them around, let's see. If you have checking account, what is the confidence that you have about them also have home equity line of credit? It doesn't show up here. So it, it probably has pretty low support. Uh, support will be the same, but support will be above 10% because it's the same. But confidence might be low. Under what condition, if you add one more service, um, then you can, be con you can be fairly confident that the confidence of home equity line of service will increase. What one additional service um, do you need to be part of A? So if you know a customer has a checking account, that alone doesn't give you enough confidence about home equity line of service. But what else? If you can add one more. Of all the services that we have, <coughs> ATM card, credit card. What is, um, who needs a home equity line of service? most likely has to be a homeowner so mortgage yeah uh, why not but mortgage is not here so hypothetically you can model that and you can make a prediction um, and you can confirm it by using 
the 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 method, the the mining. Yeah. Uh, what what is the uh, let's see let's look at a, a second highest confidence case so in this this is the rule number three might be the second highest and rule number three says if you have credit card you have high confidence that this person also has checking account and I almost thought that should be 100 because having a credit card depends on that you have a checking account, but it has changed probably. Um, <clears throat> so, um, in the case of checking, let's see. And um, there's one more statistic here. I, I talk about support and confidence. There's an expected confidence. Um, expected confidence gives you a comparison point. Expected confidence is simply overall of, of all your sample, of all everybody, um, what is the likelihood that this person has B? You know, overall, what's the likelihood of this person has B? What do you think about checking account? What is the percentage that uh, uh, of customers that have checking account without without knowing anything else? Pretty high. Should be pretty high. Because checking account is a basis of a lot of other um, services. So you can almost say that the first service, the very first service, the majority of the customers deal with the bank would be the checking account. Otherwise, they wouldn't even enter the system. You know, if they are denied with a, uh, for a checking account, you know, they're not going to get anything else, typically. Place. Checking but savings account. is another case. And the checking account can be like opened, but not used. That's and right. Have, yeah, right? yeah, right. There's no usage data yeah. here. It's so only you status. You know that will, you know uh, that will make it a, a more powerful model and give you more information. Um, I think that falls into the quantity side. You know, a, as if you. If if you not only know that the customer buy one uh, buy soda, buy Pepsi, but you know this person buy ten dozens of soda. You know, in, in this condition, you can you know find out pretty interesting rules. So uh, let, let's look at the uh, expected con expected um, confidence. You know, these lines, uh, number 1, 2, 3, 4, number 14, 15, 16, they are at the same height. And this line is expected confidence. And given that they are on the same height with the same percentage, over 85%, they, they are all talking about the same uh, consequent service which is the, the, the most popular service of, of this bank, you know. And it's, it's, it's definitely checking account. And you, know, and you verify that, you see that the B service of these rules are checking. So you, know, you confirm that with the data, and you confirm the, uh, the meaning of, of the rules. So what might be interesting here? Uh, you know, all the dependencies are not interesting because that's a rule. So what might be interesting here? Uh, 
uh, I think rule seven is is pretty interesting. Well, yeah, um, maybe depends on how the ATM card is um, is is used. ATM cards are typically joined from the checking account. So having an ATM card typically means there's a checking account. Um, so cross check with the checking to saving. Yeah, checking to saving. Uh, row seven and row 13. Row seven, row 13, Tip, they're on the similar height. That gives you a confidence of 66.8%. So if you know a person has a, a checking account, um, there's 66, close to 66% that a customer uh, also likely to have or open a, a savings account. You know, a savings account, um, <coughs> a savings account is something that uh, retail, retail banks will, will value. Uh, uh, more than checking account because savings account has less uh, uh, fluctuations uh, gives gives banks more certainty um, in uh, in in uh, predicting the uh, volatility of, of of the account so that they can better invest those um, asset you know um, if 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 the if part of the priority of the bank is to promote savings account, then these two rules might be useful. So, so uh, that concludes the demonstration. Um, on homework, you know, um, most critical is that you uh, you follow the uh, specifications. Make sure those uh, spec those uh, you know importing processes and, and properties are right, and a, a few key settings there that you need, need to change, um, and then you know um, you need to know how to get the rules, how to extract the rules, and you have sorting uh, option there, so uh, you're asked to report the rule that has the highest number on some statistic. Yeah, so you will sort those rules um, and uh, report the statistics. Any questions? Great. So let's take some uh, take some take a break. We'll come back at seven forty. Let me continue the recording here. So. So I uh, earlier I restricted the the rules. I can only have one. Now let's expand it to two. And lower. When you have a, a bigger bundle. Um, but if you don't increase the threshold, it don't change much. And so uh, need to reduce some of the uh, thresholds. So I can keep. 10, but confidence reduced to 20. And let's see what new rules can be discovered. Oh, it didn't change much, didn't it? So I used to have 16. Now there are 17. So one more. I need to reduce um, either, even further. Been some change. Uh, we have almost 50, 51, 51 rules. <laughs> um, and this set of rules 
uh, or the uh, 16 rules earlier is a subset of all the rules here, right? So it should include what, uh, what we have seen. So there are some perfect, like uh, perfect confidence here, which is the dependency cases. Uh, the only difference is that their uh, role ID changed. <coughs> Let's see. If you take a look at the rules, uh, you can observe how many uh, bundle rules are uh, instead of the single item rule. Let's see. Well, not ma not many. Yeah, not really a lot more. Uh, maybe still because of the threshold I set. Uh, for restrictive thresholds, the the bundles um, just don't show up because it's harder to observe significant bundle. Uh, patterns than than single uh, single rules. So the the additional ones that show up here is because I I reduce the threshold for confidence and support. One more time, and increase more flexibility. Now we have uh, uh, more more diversities here. Um, instead of looking at randomly, let's pick some of the you know high confidence rules and cross compare. Rule fifty two. Okay. Let's take this example. Rule 52 has a confidence of 100. This must be a dependence case. Let's see if it's a bundle. It's not a bundle. It's it's the same one. Right. Uh, instead of looking at the perfect confidence, maybe let's consider something lower. Rule 43 is a is a bundle. That's great. So rule forty three if savings account and checkings account then auto loan has a confidence of sixty four percent which means of those customers who have at least checkings and savings account, there are there's one third of them close to that also will have an auto loan. Now that makes sense. If a, if a household has both a checking and savings account, it's it's a household that is more established than 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 the otherwise, right? For a household that has a savings account. That means there's a need for saving at least. Now, there may be a um, <coughs> a need for the saving for um, future use, you know, a, a college savings account maybe, and um, 
What do you think? Savings and check-ins. Instead of only having a check-in account, have both savings and check-in account. Um, maybe we can compare another rule, see if we can find it. If check-in, then auto. Do you see it? You can sort by initial letter of the if check in and auto it it doesn't show up um it doesn't show up yeah so so based on um the surface rules uh what i can what i can reason is that um it's better to know that a customer has both check-in and saving, and then to predict the, 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 the likelihood of an auto loan, then if I only know that the, the customer has check-in account, but not necessarily savings account. So um, knowing both information about both the, the check-in and savings account tend to increase the likelihood that this customer uh, either has uh, auto loan or will be interested in auto loan so it gives you a uh, potential uh, a marketing strategy so how um, if you were asked to sort the um, sort the rules by confidence or sort the rules by support how will you do that so you need to extract a table with the rules and their statistics to be able to do that. Um, you have the rules table report, which is um, which is like a table actually, um, and it does have all the statistics that you want for every rule that is that qualifies. Uh, based on the thresholds. So based on this table, you can sort by lift, you know, inverse, or you can sort by support. The highest rule that has, uh, the highest support rule will be checking and saving, which is, you know, obvious here. And the two rules have the same support because they are the same combination. Uh, only the order is changed. But when you switch the orders, their confidence changed dramatically from 60% to 80%. Yeah, most likely it's because saving is not the same as checking. Checking is more popular, right? 